so I'm not Dr. Tadros. But uh, it was a little confusing because we were both assigned this topic, and uh, then he went ahead and did this talk, but his wife is actually in active labor right now. So I said to him, either you do the talk and I attend to your wife, <laughs> or the opposite. He went to see his wife. So these are his slides, so bear with me a little bit. I also have no financial really. Anyway, um, he basically put together a, a series of, of cases, and one of them actually I presented a little bit earlier uh, today. Um, a 62-year-old male, a lot of comorbidities, who presented uh, with severe abdominal pain and was found to have a pseudoaneurysm around the visceral segment. He was admitted uh, to the hospital and it really came in initially with a hypertensive crisis and it required a lot of uh, medical management. He was then found uh, to have an elevated white count and his blood cultures grew out Klebsiella. He also had a few weeks prior to this an upper respiratory infection which was treated by his primary care doctor. And uh, he, he was, uh, unfortunately his course was pretty complicated with intubation and such. So here's his CAT scan, shows a pseudoaneurysm in the visceral segment of the aorta. And with the elevated white count, positive blood cultures, it was con concerning for a mycotic aneurysm. So the question was what to do for this gentleman. It was obviously open surgery. You can think of some endovascular interventions. And then there's also the hybrid approach. I think after multiple discussions with uh, his team, uh, they felt that open surgery was probably the better solution for this robust gentleman, even though he had <laughs> A few comorbidities. But also, uh, when we talk about open surgery for mycotic aneurysms, is there really a role for any different type of conduit for mycotic aneurysms? I, pr I prefer to use Dacron. I don't think there's really good data to suggest there's one better than the other. Uh, do you soak the, the graft in antibiotics or not? I usually soak them in antibiotics. I'm not sure that really matters, but it makes me feel better. So basically this gentleman had a, uh, I did a thoracal abdominal operation on him and basically had to resect, did a sort of type three thoracal abdominal. Everything was infected in the back. He had a big pocket of pus. Some of the fellows, I don't see him here, were, came and scrubbed on this case. He had uh, probably at least 50 to 75 cc's of pus in the retroperitoneum. And we did a, a thoracal abdominal repair. This is not my artwork, this is a, my uh, colleague, he's a, an artist and sometimes he makes my work look very pretty. And basically this is what we had in the operating room. But this is after radical debridement of the retroperitoneum. And the patient did well uh, after about eight days in the hospital, IV antibiotics for about 12, 12 weeks, and he's now on suppressive antibiotics. Here's an 80 year old gentleman. With, who presented uh, with um, a GI bleed and also fevers. He had a, um, was found to have a coloaortic fistula from a diverticulitis. He had a pretty calcified aorta also. So with the uh, GI, GI bleed, in elder, he was an elderly gentleman, uh, and infected uh, aorta, the decision was made to, to go ahead with an EVAR and consider a possible uh, bridge to an open procedure. So he had an EVAR and was given uh, antibiotics. After that, and he did well from the EVAR, he was cleared from a cardiopulmonary standpoint for an open procedure. Interesting is that he came back to the hospital four weeks later with signs of sepsis even though he was getting IV antibiotics. And this was his CAT scan.
So Dr. Tadros went ahead with a aorta by FEM, given his calcified iliacs, uh, and felt that a distal anastomosis would be difficult. He explanted the EVAR and ligated the distal aorta. Here is expansion of the uh, device. This is all the uh, material that was removed at the time of the explant with radical debridement of the retroperitoneum. And he is currently doing well. Obviously, there's other uh, endovascular solutions to uh, dealing with a mycotic aneurysm. We've seen many of these examples this, um, this morning and this afternoon. Obviously, uh, this is one of the options that you can perform um, for an, uh, a mycotic aneurysm in the thoracal abdominal aorta. If it's high up in the uh, distal arch or in the proximal descending, um, we've done uh, sort of aortic arch replacements and a T-VAR uh, to, uh, to repair the distal aortic arch uh, into the proximal descending. Uh, if another solution for a mycotic aneurysm in the visceral segment is a, uh, in this particular case, he did a, a two-vessel uh, debranching and then brought a T-VAR down into the visceral segment uh, for um, this particular patient. And this is just uh, showing the open repair for the debranching from the, from the abdominal aorta. He's also done uh, these debranchings the using uh, the, um, these gore hybrid grafts so to um, minimize uh, ischemic time to the end organ. And he said he's had uh, very good results with these devices. So I thank you again. I know this was a short talk, but unfortunately he had to attend to his wife. Thank you very much.